Now let's have a look at how we can visualize currency pairs with Shiny. So in the previous tutorial, we saw how we can use Quandl to select currency pairs, specify dates, and plot the output. But doing this is too cumbersome. Wouldn't it be easier to have an application where we just select the currency pair, we select the dates, and we're good to go? Well, this is what we're going to be doing with the Shiny web app. So let's have a look at the final output that we want to come up with here. You can see that we're able to select our currency pair, and this is just loading up, and we're also able to specify the dates, and we get a plot of the currency pair along with a 20-day moving average. So you can see that manipulating the Shiny web app just makes this process a lot more intuitive than having to go back and edit the code each time. So if we now select the N, you can see that we're able to select different currency pairs and, as we've mentioned, specify the dates. Now let's look at how we can create a Shiny web app in the R console. So we're going to select Shiny web apps. We're going to name our application Quandl Currency. We're going to select multiple file. So again, we have our user interface and our server file. So let's go ahead and start constructing our user interface. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load in the Shiny library. You'll have to install this if you don't already have it. So we're defining our user interface as a fluid page. We're going to title it as currency. And we want to define what's called a fluid row. So we want our interface to have a series of currency pair. So it's a it's a drop down box of three currency pairs essentially, but we can include more in the app if we wish. So we're defining our currency symbols and we're going to select the um, Canadian dollar to the US dollar. That's going to be our first currency pair. We're also looking at the Japanese yen to the dollar. And we're keying in the relevant symbols to be able to download these. And we're also going to look at the Swiss franc to the dollar as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to set some defaults in our app. In other words, the currency and the dates that will be selected by default, but these are obviously able to be changed depending on what you as the user inputs into them. So the CAD USD is selected by default. We're defining a start date. So this is going to be the first day that from which we wish to analyze the currency pair. And we're going to set a default value of the 1st of May 2016, but this is just an arbitrary value and this can be changed by the user input. And we're just going to copy this and we're going to do the same for the end date. So we're going to make this 2017, a year later, and we're going to change the name from start to end date.
So what we also want to do is we want to show a plot of the generated output. That's really the whole purpose of doing this. So we're typing in main panel. We then want to plot our output. So we're going to call this FX results. So this is going to be the name of our output. So this is going to be our user interface. So this is what's going to display when we are actually presented with the Shiny Web App. Now in the server file, what we want to do is we want to put in all the calculations and all the input that our app is going to be doing for us. So we're going to load in our libraries first of all. So you can see we're loading in Shiny, ggplot2, scales, quandl, and we're also going to load in TTR for computing a 20-day moving average. So let's start by building our Shiny application. We're going to define Shiny server, and we have our function with our input and our output. So we've named our output FX results within the UI script. So we're going to render the plot and we're going to define the calculation that we wish to do with quandles. So you can see that we're using input symbols. So the symbols that are specified from the user interface, we're defining a start date as input start date. We're defining an end and we're defining an end date as well. And we're defining as type XTS as standard with Quandl. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our Quandl output into a data frame like we did in our previous application. And as well as plotting the currency output, what we also want to do is we want to calculate a 20-day moving average. So this will be a red line that will show the 20-day trend of the movement in the currency pair. So we want to plot the currency as a line graph, so type L. We're going to give it a blue color and we're defining our x-axis as the number of days and the y-axis as the rate. And we're also going to be plotting the simple moving average. as type L, lines, and we're going to be giving this the color red. And the title is going to be the symbol of the selected currency, which is what we generated in the UI. So we're going to save this. Now let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that we are presented with the dates and the currency symbol of our choice. So you can see that this is the plot for the for the loonie versus the USD. And if we change the dates around, you can see that our plot dynamically changes accordingly. So let's go ahead and select another one. Let's select the N. You can see that the plot now changes to reflect the yen. And if we select the Swiss franc to the dollar, our plot downloads the latest information also. And as I said, the beauty of using Shiny is that we can do this dynamically. We don't have to edit any code. And it makes the process a lot easier 
for when it comes to presenting this to somebody who doesn't have a technical background, doesn't know R, or if you just want to simply make the process more simple by just selecting the currency and selecting the dates without having to go in and edit the code. So now that we've built our shiny web app, let's see how we can make it a bit more sophisticated. So we started off by including a 20-day moving average for analyzing our currency pairs. Let's now include a few more moving averages of differing time lengths and see what we come up with on the graph. So we started off with a 20-day moving average. Let's now include a 10-day and a 100-day moving average. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit the code here. And we're also going to include more lines to reflect that we want to include the 10 and 100 day moving averages as well as the 20. So we'll go ahead, run our app and save. And you can see that we now have three different lines that illustrate our moving average. And again, when we adjust the dates, we get the new price, but the moving averages also adjust accordingly. And remember that before we were able to use Quandl to also analyze stock prices from the wiki database as well as currencies. So let's go ahead and adjust our Shiny Web App to be able to visualize stock prices this time. We're still going to use the 10, 20 and 100 day moving averages, but we're going to modify the code slightly so that we are importing stock prices and analyzing them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce column index set to 4 for our variable. And the reason we do this is because you may remember from before that Quandl imports the open, high, low, close prices and the close prices are in the fourth column, so that's what we want to specify. And what we want to do in the UI is we want to change the currency symbols to the relevant stock symbols that we're importing from wiki. And what I'm just going to do here is just do a little bit of code editing first, just to change from currency symbols to stock symbols. So let's go ahead and import a few stocks. So let's start with Apple. And because we're importing it from the wiki database, wiki slash Apple. And we'll also import a couple more stocks as well. We're also importing CBS and BAC, and we're setting the default stock set to Apple. So let's save this, run, and see what we come up with. And you can see that our stock price is imported. We also have the moving averages that are being calculated on those. We can adjust the dates as before, and we can also select the different stock prices. So you can see that if you really wanted to take this to the next level, you could have a whole load of different currency pairs, different stock prices, and you could essentially use the Shiny Web App as your own terminal of sorts. So we've seen how we can use the Shiny Web App in conjunction with Quandl to import currency prices and how we can import stock prices and then make various calculations based on that data.